Okay, episode four of Chatting Shit about the Labyrinth Cup. Uh, joined by Rob at the Magician, Marcus, Arceus Aurelius, and Andrew Mystic Ass. Uh, how are we all? We're fine, thanks. Oh, good, Rob. Thanks. Uh, and you? Yeah, mate. Yeah, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I love, love to hear it. Yeah, feel, feeling good about this matter, to be honest. Um, strange one, but interesting one nonetheless. Um, we'll start off with Rob tonight with a pick that I'm, I've not heard him talk about it yet. Like even in the you know even in chat, which is which is unusual when it's available. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was. It needs to see something. Yeah, my my pick's like a song. Okay, at number one away. And I'm always going to pick it when it's viable. And then you need that. People say you. People say you need an XL, but you, you don't really. Um, it's just amazing. It beats everything, basically. It, it'll take on the ghosts. It'll take on the waters. It'll even take on the lower nine tails. Things like that. It'll go toe to toe with a Venusaur because it can just get body spam, spam, and then lick that off. The XL. Or pick up a bomber snow. You're losing to diggers, be Mandy Buzz. A hundo at level 44 and a half picks up Canto Nine Tails. So you don't even need to go to level 50. You're losing to Reggie Steel, Toxic Pro. You lose to Venusaur, but it's close. Figure off. The XL picks up Zwilus. Really about it. But if you can partner it with a Toxic Pro, then you're covering everything that you eat to anyway. Yeah. It's, oh, wow. It's really good alongside Toxic Group. A, a big matchup is you can beat Skarmory even at level 41. <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. So, it was, as, as you were reeling off those those lists of things that beats it, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, you mentioned Toxie. It, it, it sounds like a really perfect partner for a, for a county the, user, doesn't it? But, Toxic rope matchup for the XL is flipped by one team. If you get a one lick advantage, you flip one team. You, you flip, flip Toxic rope. Yeah. <laughs> because That's huge. With the, one, with the one lick energy lead, you get to the third body slam that KOs the top. Holy crap. Uh, uh, I've always been I've always been fond of the, uh, of the Licky Boys, or the Lickers, anyway. Uh, I I think Licker Tongue will be definitely um, the the prime liquor when you get it to act, to like the XL size or the XL level. Uh, but this was just, this is ridiculous. It, it even picks up Swallows. I, I I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. The days of Munchlax are long and truly over. I think. Uh, yeah, I've, I, I've always felt uh, Munchlax was so overhyped. I mean, Licky Licky has always been a better pick than Munchlax, in my opinion. Better move sense. In this cup, it's, in this cup it's a risk because you, you're taking out bigger off and diggers, which, which are really good as normal to mm. But as I've said, you've got the likes of Toxie, you've got the Fjord Fighters that you can go with. You can still take a counter user. You can still take something like a Yenovan Stumpers for your ground damage. So mm, sure. picks out there to partner with it. Yeah. What, what do you reckon, yeah. Andrew? Would you consider dropping Vig for Licky Tongue at any point? Personally, no. Um, you know, Vig has been in my team. I've done probably four practice tournaments now, and I did a live tournament last night. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of Vigor off at all, um, you know, I'm surprised I didn't run the Toxic Oak strap. Um, but to be honest, I've never had the, a decent liquor tongue. I've, you know, I've got nowhere near the XL candy to make one, so it's just not even a viable, you know, option for me. Um, but in this instance, I just think v Vigor off. It just gets you a few more wins than, than the Toxie does, even though the Toxie beats it. And you know, the liquor tongue, you know, the liquor tongue, you know. It's still fairly close, but I just think Big Rock is the way to go. I think it's the, the staple pick. You know, mo most players will have that available to them over the Lickitung and the Lickitung XL. Yeah. So, pres presumably, Rob, like, 
the, the nice thing about Lucky Tongue is that it's the that sort of generalist that the Vigoroff is, but one that beats the ghosts. Yeah. Um, with that in mind, how do you how do you reckon it compares to like something like Obstacle, which sort of is comparable that way as well, um, but with the dark typing. Obstagoon is going to struggle against Black Polytoad, the Lola Ninetales and things going to. Things that can spam moves off. Mm. You've spoke about Weatherball a couple of times now. I'm this month. And then Weatherball users can just spam and spam and spam. So Lickitung can spam that with them. And Body Spam, as we all know, is one of those broken moves. Better than Nice Boss most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it's not like it's not like it's full of this cups full of scarm or anything like that. Where there's those, uh, where there's those instances where nice slash. I mean, there's a fair few scarm about, but it's not as not as popular as perhaps. Uh, I certainly... well, so Obstagoon, Obstagoon and Vic can't really take on Galvantula, where does Lick come to Yeah, that's yeah, it. because Gal Galvantula resists the counter damage. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and Obstagoon as well certainly doesn't want to be taking lunches. No, absolutely not. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I mm. feel like there's lots of good counter users out there, to be honest, especially with the, the prominence of ghost types. Like things, I mean, you mentioned Toxie. I, I've looked at Escavalier as well. Um, yeah. Which is similar coverage. Um, yeah, just, but that, that takes up the steel, the steel uh, typing. But is that an issue? Yeah, but if you're not taking Reggie, then... I, th I think so. I think uh, uh, there are some prominent steel types that uh, I think uh, can do really well in this meta. Uh, so uh, Escavalier has not been on my radar so far, at least. Yeah, I think Escav Escavalier is one of those ones that keep that kept popping up on the PV poke team builder to feel like weird. Yeah, ones. yeah, and I mean, uh, whenever you see a fire a fire type on. The opponent's side, you're not going to bring a scavenger. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, because if you're trapped in the wrong matchup, it's basically game over. And uh, there will be fire types, a little Marowak or the K9, Canto Nine Tails will be probably on basically every team. Mm. Yeah, but I guess that's. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I, but I, and I guess that's one thing uh, Vigoroth does have over the other fighters is that it's. Uh, resistant to shadow ball as well um yeah of, i mean of course licky tongue is also uh, and Lick, it will have a much, will have a much better matter but, um yeah by surrendering by surrendering by surrendering vic as you fire you're surrendering like a, a proper chance to flip mm -hmm. uh, unless you're in toxic i guess um but you know that's touch and go Toxic Rogue, do you have does have play against uh, Marowak with an energy or shield advantage? Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, double up. Yeah, Toxic can take on Sableye with energy advantage as so. well. Yeah, I think uh, I think with one counter counter advantage, I think if, I think Toxic Rogue wins the twos. I I've heard you mention that before here. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, but, uh, that's because it gets uh, it wins CMP on the last. On the yeah. last mud bomb, yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think, I, I think it's certainly something. I think neither Toxie nor Licky Tongue are as sort of pick up and play as as, as something like Vigoroth is. Like you could, mm. you could pick up Vigoroth having never played it before, and uh, and it it will do well. But yeah, yeah, I think Licky Tongue and Toxie, um, by all means, fantastic picks as well, and. Mm. It's just I think they're just things you have to use a bit more, um, and that's why that partially I'm, I imagine that you found you've had, well you find you've had a lot of success with Lucky Tongue Rob. I'm do you have you found like since beginning since starting off with it that it, it's got better and better or is it or is it as pick up and play? Oh yeah, it's certain, yeah no, it's certainly got better. I've, I've learned how to play more and more. It's got better and better. Yeah, and certain matchups when I first started using it, but that's what they go go. Now, yeah, it and reminds me. Not as bad as it yeah, it reminds me a bit of Celio. Um, sort of yeah, one of those way. ones where people are looking at it and thinking, "I don't want to spend all that stardust on it because um, it's never going to yeah. go again." And but you're going to get, you're going to regret not spending the stardust on it. Yeah, it always pops up as good, doesn't it? it yeah. yeah. 
I think it's one of them that when you look at it, like you just mentioned Celio. Why would you take Celio and spend all that stardust over Lafra? When it's got the same tarping, and I think like a bunch of stuff with that same thing that it's got. The same tarping is a big one. Yeah, why would you spend 200 and odd thousand stardust powering it up and you can just take a bigger off? Yeah. That's yeah, true. but but uh, for me, it, it it looks like the only hard counter to the Lickitung in this meta is actually Vigoroth. Uh, even Mandibuzz is taken low by Lickitung. Yeah. Uh, at least the XL, from what I can see. So uh, Vigoroth is is the hard counter, but I mean, you you can play around Vigoroth for sure. Yeah. I, uh, and and. How close it it is to Mandibus? I'm I'm actually really surprised how close it takes uh, Mandibus because Mandibus is a flying bus. <laughs> it's it's just it's just so massive. I love that thing. See, I've, I've I've been using Mandibus a lot, and I've I have found I know. struggles a bit with the uh, it does struggle a bit with the bulkier things because things that you know Mandibus has got a low attack anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, the moves are doing even to even to fairly fragile things. Um, the moves aren't doing a great deal of damage. So well, it's simul as it's Licky Tongue. simultaneous KOs in the ones with bigger off Mandibus. Yeah. Oh wow, that's yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, 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 Mandibus is not my type of mon, but uh, I'm. It's it's annoying to play against because you'll always need one more charge move than you actually plan for. Mm. But yeah. something like Licky Tongue, if you're gonna, if if you're gonna, it works as a bit of a bait. Like as the Mandibus player, I, I would think that Mandibus would be a, a really good counter to Licky Tongue. So it's certainly yeah. something I'd go into. And if 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 the Licky Tongue player's got something in the back like a Venusaur, then that's even even losing that matchup might be enough to to win a game. So. Um, that's true and uh, I think even Venusaur could farm down the Mandibuzz almost after Lickitung has, has done his work on it and well, maybe yeah, no, not, if, but it's if your opponent brings in another with nine tails yeah maybe you, farm down with a shield yeah mm. no no problem um, yeah I'm I'm uh, convinced by Lickitung to put it that way. Uh, Lickitung is amazing. Well, it's we great. Say, so, we, so that's it. You, you're dropping Vig then, yeah? Uh, I haven't had Vigoroth in any of my team drops so far, actually. Oh, fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I've uh, actually not had any normal types at all, uh, apart from Diggers B ones, and it's not really good. Um, uh, in my opinion, at least, um, to easily walled, but uh, Lickitung is up for consideration. It's it's definitely a very interesting generation. Yeah, been, been a bit quiet there, Andrew. Any any final thoughts on Lickitung before we move on? Um, I just think you know, most players will not have that excellent Lickitung. I know Rob said, you know, a regular Lickitung can do a good job for you. But I think, you know, in live tournaments, you want to have the best possible oh, yeah. bonds at your disposal. Um, so I think if you haven't got the XL, I think you just go with Vigor off. See, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I know you're losing the, you know, the ghost matchup, you know, with Vig. Hmm. Yeah. But, you know, there's other things, you know, most people will be running, you know, AWAC. That's where yeah. the type comes in. I don't. I don't think your normal type is necessarily for the ghost types, from my point of view. No, well, certainly not. Um, but a lot of teams will be built that way. A lot of teams will be built that way, where the ghost type is there as the primary counter of the normal. If you have the normal that flips the ghost, it, it might. Yeah. It it might be enough to cause some havoc. I've, I've had a couple. I've had a bit of trouble versus obstacle teams. Um, because I see that. I've been a bit weak too. Big outside of me, ghost, and then when when Ostagoon comes, it's uh, it's, <laughs> it's caused me a lot of problems. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a difficult it's a difficult temptation. It's difficult to justify dropping Vig in it, but 
Uh, I, I, what I, I certainly think that if you if you think you stumble across a really nice team that has Licky Tongue in it, absolutely go for it. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Cool. I, I absolutely agree. Cool. Let, let's let's move on then. Uh, we touched on uh, water ice types very briefly uh, when we talked about Celio and Lapras. Uh, my mm -hmm. pick tonight is Dugong. Um, oh. Difficult one because obviously a lot of Nine Tails is all over the place, Politoes all over the place, and Dugong takes up both the water and ice types. Um, but what I've been finding is that I've often wanted the water typing and <clears throat> ice damage, like what? without the ice typing, or I've been looking for an ice, or I've, I felt pigeonholed into an ice that isn't weak to counter, say like Frostlass or or a lot of Nine Tails, um, mm -hmm. and. If, if you're not if you th if you're not thinking that Politoed or Jellison or uh, Pelipper or something like that is is something an absolute staple in your team, um, and you're not particularly concerned about the water typing, I think Dugong's worth a shout because it's the it's an ice type that isn't particularly worried about Marowak. Um, it's not a great matchup, but uh, it's it's playable it's certainly. It's close. Yeah, it's close. And even being weak to counter. If you've got a good IV one, uh, you're picking up bigger off in the twos. Um, as 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 the icy wind nerfs come in, uh, icy wind debuffs come in, you'll you'll power through things like Politoed. You'll power through things like Nine Tails as well. Um, Politoed, even if it goes, even if it gets a bait, loses the ones, I believe, um, and it's a big bait to go for going for a. a a weather ball rather than an earthquake, given how much how little weather ball is going to do to Dugong. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's an it could be an interesting partner with Figaroff, as I say, switch. So, like, if your opponent's got a team that's really, really anti Vig, um, so let, let's say something like uh, a lot of Marowak, Tropius, uh, what else beats Vig? That's, that's the problem in it. Uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, yeah, it's an it's an interesting potential two shield mon, which would allow you to use Vig in a dif in a different way if you wanted. Um, bit of a difficult sell, as I say, because of because of what it rules out on your team. But uh, it's always it's always good when it's available. Uh, but like Licky Tongue in that in that regard, it's just been a little overshadowed here, perhaps. Um, yeah. Um, from what what I can see, uh, I think uh, the rank one Dugong. Actually, Toxic Rogue needs to land a Sludge Bomb to take out the rank one Dugong after a after a debuff. Right. So so Dugong has. Right, I'll ponder that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, look at my surprised face. Hello. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. So uh, even Toxic Rogue, uh, Toxic Rogue, I reckon should be one of Dugong's hardest counters, and even then you do have play against Toxic Rogue, which is which is kind of wicked in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, and the, the electric types here as well. Uh we have so we have Galvantula, Stunfisk and Lantern as sort of the bigger the bigger three and, and maybe Zapdos in there as well. Like you you'll be beating Zapdos and, and Stunfisk I would imagine. And uh Lantern's obviously gonna gonna wall you, but uh, Galvantula's going to have a difficult time, uh, especially if it goes for lunges and, and you call the bait. Um, I mean, it could be a bit of a slow matchup that one, but it's not going to be as one-sided as you might think an electric versus water type is because of the bulk on uh, on Dugong. It's, it's pretty mad, really. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll have to admit, I've uh, led the Galvantula into Dugong in GBL, and I lost that game. Even though I had three Dugong counters on my team, it could happen. It could happen. I don't know how I did it, but I did, and it was it was yeah, it was terrible. So I've I've lost a game before where I've counter switched the Ferrothorn into a Dugong, but because I was a little slow, so I thought I'd try and whatever I was in with before. I thought I'll stay in for a little bit, just get a bit of energy. Ferrothorn's a really hard counter. I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. No, it was not fine. I think I gave it three oh, ice geez. shots, and that was that was enough to flip it. Um, oh wow! It's a bit of a beast. It's a bit of a beast. Yeah. Uh, my issue with Dugong is that I feel whenever I've played it, I feel uh, that I'm const constantly in a shield disadvantage. 
so if you don't shield the first move, then then you basically screwed. And if they decide to not shield your moves, uh, you might win, probably, perhaps win switch, but you will you will give up shield advantage. Mm. And that's that's the issue I have with Dugong. Uh, there are some things that re resist ice type damage, and if you encounter uh, the things that resist ice type damage, you're basically screwed. Oh, at least oh, somewhat, because water pulse is a really shitty move. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I know your your coverage move is is not doing as well as you'd hope it to. Yeah, no, for sure. But there there isn't much here that does resist ice, really. Uh, I mean, as, as we say, Politoed. Yeah, steel, water, yeah. and fire types, basically. Yeah, and fire would be okay against steel. Yeah. Is going to struggle, but you're okay against Skarmory. Um, mm -hmm. And water types, you know, over, over the long run. You're gonna you're gonna be able to outlast them if if you want to. I mean, as you say, you're gonna be you're gonna be down shield. Um, but if, if that's lined up a scenario where, I mean, it, I mean, it all depends what else is on your team. If if that lines you up a Driftblind versus a Vigoroth, for example, that it's worth mm -hmm. putting down the shield in it. But um, yeah, it, for sure, for sure, that's an issue, and it's and it's an, it, and it's an issue we'll come across again later tonight, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, why not just go with Lapras then? Because so when, when I first looked at Dugong, Dugong's Dugong's charge moves are a bit shit, really. They are, they are. Um, Icy wind, Icy wind is because of the debuff and um, waterfall. Yeah. But with Lapras, you get the um, skull bash, which yeah. you know you're going to do damage with. So if, you're, be... if you skull bash even on a water, you're still going to do a lot of damage, even to a polytoad or a rain cast one lantern. So I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Oh, go on, Andrew. Sorry, mate. Well, I was going to say, I took a skull bash last night in a tournament on White Body Toad, and it chugged. <laughs> so, I can see that that was actually, yeah, probably been a better option over Dugong. So, I mean, when I was looking at this, I, I actually looked at Celio first, because I was looking for something that might that'd break up the... So, so Polytoad's everywhere, and all the Ninetales is everywhere. So I wanted mm -hmm. a water type that would beat... Uh, be, be, yeah, I mean, Polly, Polly's the big one. Most waters will beat nine, a lot of nine tails, I guess. But I wanted, yeah, I wanted one that certainly that beat Polly, but wasn't uh, wasn't doing water damage, um, just because I didn't, I didn't want to be stuck against grass types. Um, and what initially drew me to Celio was the body slam spam, as is well known. Is that it's really, it's a really good way to good way to yeah. go. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility with the spam. Yeah, um, but as, as I looked into it, the it was the Vigoroth matchup uh, that made me plump for Dugon really, because it's, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to not be weak to Vigoroth in this cup. So um, having that, that that ice type that is weak to counter, but still has a way of winning that matchup and taking switch if you need it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as you say, Marcus, it'll be you'll probably come out at a shield disadvantage, but you might have an ice shot, icy wind to throw at the next thing, which makes farming easier. So there's always there's, there's ways back in. Um, there's ways back in, and, and the bulk always helps. So that, that's that's why I prefer it to to Lapras and Celio. Um, seen a few knocking around. Don't, don't think I've actually played one yet. Um, I used it myself the other night, and I quite liked it. Um, I think it. I think it. It just depends, as as is off, so often the case in this cup on your team, doesn't it? Because with the bet, as I say, it beats Vigoroff in the twos, but you still don't want to be stuck in the end Um mm. it, It's it's a way out at best, isn't it? Like, um, and so I, personally, I feel like minimizing counter weaknesses as much as possible is is a is a solid way to go. So. Um, when the competition is that pairing of a little nine tails or frost last with polytoad and then you can, I, yeah it's it's tough for sure it's tough for sure any any further thoughts on on Duga? um you're talking about the bigger off more backed up and saying like you pick because of that because you like they can take bigger off twos but then the Lola Ninetales and Polycoat can both flip the regular off. Well, well, that's it. 
Yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm not. You'll, you'll also have better matchups elsewhere. Yeah. In the matter, so can you justify picking up both slots for you going? Well, the two things that are really good in this matter. Well, this is it. What I mean, the reason I was looking at it was because I needed. I, I, what I wanted was seven months. I wanted. Uh, I wanted Polito to Lola Nantel. You can't have seven months. Can I know, you? mate. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted Polito to Lola Ninetales and something else. Uh, but then, I, so I was thinking about which of these. I forget which the third one was, but I was thinking about which of these three months were the, was the, like the most disposable. And I decided that it, it wasn't the third month. So then I was looking for something that did both of what of what Polytoed and and a little no, bit. did. And yeah, and it was essentially what it was was a fire resistance with ice damage. That's and that's that's I mean it's niche. Um it's it's got nowhere near the speed of those two months with with the shield pressure. So it's it's gonna alter the the whole dynamic of your team. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think if it I think if it was given a better water move. A weather ball charge me. Black weather ball will stay. It's a lot more uh, yeah. viable. Even Aquatail. Even Aquatail. <laughs> Perhaps. Oh, yeah. Even. Just not hide the water balls, really. Yeah, exactly. Just, just not hide the pump. I mean, we already have Cloyster, and Cloyster is nowhere because you, you'll never land a hydro, hydro pump. No. Yeah. And Cloyster is so, uh, so much frailer than. Uh, yeah. As well. But. I think if you give it something that's close to icy wind energy as well, it could be a lot better for it because most people know you're just going to go icy wind. It's true. So if you get... If you, because, look, yeah, go on. It, it, it adds a lot more bait potential to those maps. I agree. If, if, you, if you gave... Move that's closer to icy wind. If you gave Dugong Surf, it would be a menace. Uh, right now, I feel you're giving up shield advantage if you're playing Dugong, basically. And uh, that's that's the issue for me. I, I'm I'm really fan of shield advantage. Yeah, certainly here where there's so many things where it's all right winning switch and going down a shield. But if they if your opponent's got vigor off in the back, which is good versus most things, and perhaps mm -hmm. something like polytoad, which is good versus most things as well, like they're perhaps not bothered about switch switch advantage. Um, exactly. So. Yeah, well, if they've got one of Mark's favorite ones and running a charmer, you know. Well, <laughs> that's it. Pair it with a charmer and a razor leaf, for me. That's that's the way uh, to go. Char charmer and probe pass. That's the way. <laughs> oh, it's trash, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's not great here. But probe pass. I've got I've got a soft spot for probe pass, but <laughs> it's just not here. <laughs> you do, you mates. You do. You. <laughs> right. Well, let's move on then. Uh, Andrew's got a bit of a similar pick in in, uh, in some ways to Dugong. Um, yeah, why don't, we, why don't you tell us about it? So, my pick is Galvantra. Um, I just think it's a bit of a must-have in this matter. Yeah, I know it's a very, very, very bold statement. Um, That's huge. Out. So, you know... Aside from Zapdos or Shadow Zapdos, there isn't really a great amount of electric options in this meta. I know you've got Grass, but obviously Zapdos covers that. Galvantula will cover that mostly all the time with its lunge. Um, so I ran a few sims earlier on in the day, and so in the ones, it's picking up Mandibuzz, it's picking up Vigoroth, it's picking up uh, XL Sableye, it's picking up Skarmory, Zuelos, Jellicent, A9, uh, Wizcash, Pelipper, Registeel, Mantine, Shadow of Bomber Snow, and Regular of Bomber Snow. Um, it's picking up Rainy Cast Form, which I think could also be very popular over Polytoned uh, going forward. Um, it picked up Obstagoon in all shields. Um, picked up Drifling, you know, so for anyone run that as a big counter. Um, again, it beats Shadow Zapdos. So, you know, that is in all shield scenarios as well. Yeah. So, if you're running your electric type as Shadow Zapdos, why are you not running Galvantula? I've actually just compared them and Zapdos is picking up Polytope, Toxicroak, Skarmory, Abomasnip, and 
that is about it. And Galvantula is picking up Vigor off A9 Poly Spartan, which, you know, everyone is kind of saying it's a Vigor off meta, Vigor off safe swap meta. So why not have your electric type or, you know, or your bug pick being something that beats the safe swap? It beats the Politoed spam. And, you know, and it even beats the A9 spam. You know, it's not going to take all three out. No. But it, it will do the good is that, is that in ones? It beats A9 in ones. Uh, A9 uh, in ones. Against A9, you yeah. need to add a lunge bait. So if the A9 doesn't shield the first move, A9 will win. No. <laughs> you need the debuff to be A9. to A9. If if A9's running Dazzling Gleam, Galvantula loses even with a lunge bait. Oh, that's just... the Dazzling Gleam. The, the Dazzling Gleam does 105 damage even after the Is lunge. It... Yeah. Uh, de depends on the IV as well. If you if you've got a uh, rank nine a nine rank one a nine, uh, you're winning with four HP against Galvantula because you survive until the third weather ball. And uh, against Alone Nine Tails, um, if Alone Nine Tails doesn't shield the first move, uh, you're hitting with lunge, and uh, lunge is not enough damage to kill it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, secondly, so uh, Alone Nine Tails. Does have the upper hand again Galvantula in the ones at least oh, well in yeah, in the ones and zeros. Uh in the twos, Galvantula can probably do a little bit better. I th I think I think Galvantula's got a lot going for it. It was certainly something when the meta first dropped. My my first thought was right, my team, I want a I want a team that has Vigoroff, Sableye, and Galvantula. Uh, mm -hmm. for, for for the exact reasons that Andrew listed, it's um, it, it's a bigger off safe swap meta, or, or seems that way. Um, yeah. And uh, Galvantula is is a, is a really interesting yeah. counter to Vig. Like you, you've got ghosts, you've got flying types, but really you're not seeing many bugs or poisons around, with the exception of Venusaur. So it's it's it's, it's an interesting counter uh, counter to Vigor off that can that can pick up other things that it's that Vigoroth's other big counters can't. Uh, was particularly interested in drift blimp, um, being the you know the, the big the big figure off counter. Like I, I, I can't imagine there's a harder figure off counter than drift blimp. Um, and that so what I was thinking was it might be a really nice core breaker um, mm -hmm. of things like a, a figure off ghost. Well, certainly for the, the team the ghost teams that aren't Marowak, um, might be a really nice core breaker for of that between a ghost Marowak and a a uh, ghost figure off on a flyer. Um, what what I found what I found the problem when I used um, Galvantula, and I, and I told Andrew this, uh, with, with, so I'm, I'm expecting I'm expecting some I'm expecting a good response here. Um, what I found the problem was was that as we've just discussed, it needs to Galvantula often needs to shield first to win. Like it's mm. great in the ones, it's not so good in the zeros. And that's fine, you, you know, you're allowed, to, you're allowed to do that, but there's a lot of Marowak here. And teams that don't have Marowak tend to have nine tails. Uh, well, maybe maybe not tend to, but a lot of teams that don't have Mar Marowak have nine tails. Like, fire's, fire's quite nice here. Um, fire, fire and ground. Uh, there are some gr ground types as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. It seems to me that most teams have either a, an AWAC a Nine Tails or a Stunfisk, yeah. and all of which is sort of suitably hard enough counters where um, you're giving them shield, you're giving them shield advantage, and then they're coming in and farming you. Uh, maybe maybe not yeah. Stunfisk because it's going to get debuffed a bit by the time uh, by the time it's, it's killed you. Um, but I think giving something like particularly Nine Tails, um, mm. giving something like that. Um, shield advantage and energy advantage is it's hard to come back from it's dangerous it's dangerous yeah. it, I think it's, again, a, it's a big risk it is yeah. but you know I'm one of those type of players that would love six shields basically <laughs> <laughs> you know I I just love the spam you know um, I was going to say obviously like Galvantula is hard countered by you know AWAC Reggie Rock um, Diggersby Mm. and you know the, the perfect mon 
to go alongside Galvantula is Politoed in this meta. If you have a team consisting of Galvantula and Politoed, generally there isn't too much that stops both of them. Yeah, true. Um, I, I think the, the AWAC match is an interesting one as well because the AWAC can try and get a bit clever and, and then get you low and throw a bone club and the bone club it, it, it often the bone club doesn't kill when when you want it to <laughs> bone club's never enough is it no and a couple of discharges are going to hurt anything um, yeah that's true so it's perhaps not a lost cause against AWAC um, you know AWAC you still not want to take a discharge either. exactly from yeah, Galantula, you know, so, it's a, a like it can take one discharge, discharge, but it can't take two. No, no, and to be fair, generally the AWAC is farmed the Galvantula down, as you were saying. Now, as you're saying, it, it, Galvantula can be a bit of a farming issue, I'm not gonna lie, but again, as I said, parapolitoed of it. I find my biggest problem so far is picking a consistent pick to make the line of three. Um, Polytoed and Galvantula are my core two, generally. Mm. And then get out all my strats now, but <laughs> uh, I, I, I I can understand that. Uh, and also, I feel Galvantula are one of those ones where uh, giving up shield advantage is uh, could be could be all right because uh, it's a big chance you're getting that shield back. Because uh, unless uh, um, unlike Dugong, mm. uh, Icy Wind is easily. Uh, resisted and also Dugong's attack is not that menacing while if you if you invest a shield in Gavantula and remain with 45% HP you will get to two charge moves yeah. because you will probably have some residual energy from the last matchup, matchup as well and two lunges or two discharges, discharges as we just said is almost enough to take out AWAC so I'm sorry, sorry, yeah. I'm using Gavantula a lot as well you know, getting that lunge off just before you're about to die. Um, mm. you know, once you kill their their mom and they, they you know they bring in their switch, getting that lunge on can literally you know make or break games in some instances. That's true. Um, it is you know on the same level as icy wind. You know, it can be as devastating as you know Dugong of icy wind. Mm. And I, and I think certainly another thing it has over Dugong is. Uh, as you said, there's not a great deal of electric types here, and there's very few other bug types, like a Scavalier's sort of meta in it. But other than that, it's not both neither electric nor bug are sort of like core core types that every team's going to have. So you're not giving up a huge amount by by having it either, which is which is nice. Certainly, certainly if you're building around it, um, like if you're building around uh, Jellison, for example, like that rules out two core types further down the line or, or mm. the saber light as well that sort of thing galvantula um if you start with galvantula uh yeah there's, there's still you, you're taking barely any options off the board here uh, which yeah, is I, really nice i think i think uh galvantula is either your is either your first pick or your last pick because uh, you're probably not going to end up with uh, an electric or a bug type in another slot and it's very easy to just okay let's Put Galvantula on. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, it's very easy to just put Galvantula on the team. It will it will it will put some work for you, and it's probably not piss picking up. Um, yeah, as you said, a spot from another one that's very relevant here. Yeah, what do you reckon, Rob? Because, yeah, does its job, don't it? Why would you pick over Stumfisk? Uh, why would you Why would you pick Galantula over Stumfisk? Is that yeah. your question? Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Go on, Andrew. What have you got for us? <laughs> um. Again, it just goes back to the whole you know, the whole Polito combo. To be honest, for me, um, I'm finding that you know I've ran Galantula and Polito as you know as the core two. I've you know, been safe switched in. I've lost Galvantula to a, to a stun fist. Polytoe just come in and cleared up. And then I've got energy in the back and cleared out the last one. You know, so Galvantula, as far as I'm concerned, it's like the perfect company mom. Mm. It, it has a nice little niche spot in a line of three. 
Um, it can be destructive. You know, it comes in against a whack in a lead. It's, I personally don't like leading about Angela in this matter. I think it's very risky. You know, everyone's, you know, saying that it's a big safe swap. So people are leading um, a whack quite a lot. That's um, a stop I find anyway. So, I mean, I, I've ran Galvantula in the lead twice, and I've been burned twice. Mm. Right. So, you know, I actually quite like it as, you know, stupidly or geniusly, as a safe swap. Well, when, when energy, when, when the opponent's more energy dry. So the, the thing is, the thing is with, with that, right? It, there are, it, it might seem like a bad idea, but because of fires and AWAX and stuff like that. But realistically, if you're using your save swap, it's because you've lost the lead. Mm. And at that point, every every pair of lead and save swap has a, has a combination of things that, per, that perfectly counter it. Like there's, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, it's not ideal to be, uh, if you can avoid it. But if, if, if you feel like if the rest of your team is putting enough pressure on the fire type, like as you said, poly, like certainly if you if you use Polytoad game one and two to devastate an effect or, or it's giving them real, real trouble, there's uh, that might be enough to put them off bringing the fire in game three. Like it's perhaps in 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 the sort of long game, I think it's probably much more viable than it is in game one. Um, do you think? Also, yeah. oh, go, go on, Marcus. Yeah. Uh, also, something I like about Galvantula is that it's an electric type electric type that can take on grass types uh which which is uh i guess why you can pair it with polytub because you couldn't pair uh stumpfisk and polytub for instance because you'd be walled by a Vinsaw or or uh tropius or Thomas anything uh, yeah. Uh, yeah anything uh uh with the, with a grass type unless you're running blizzard polytub for any reason uh but yeah, so um, I think I think of all the electric types that are uh, available, I think Calvantula might be the best one. Uh, but I'm not sure uh, it's a must bring. I'm not sold on that part yet. I, well, this is it. I think you, you, you said it. You said it yourself. It's either your first pick or your sixth pick, and I guess this is this is the difference. Andrew's seeing it as his first. You're seeing yeah. it as your sixth. Uh, uh, it's it's like break, third, to be fair, but sorry, mate. Uh, it's like the third. You know, I would say actually, AWAC was my sixth pick for my team. Okay, fair. Yeah, uh, I'm not bringing. I'm not bringing AWAC. See, my my issue with this is a lowland and nine tails and a bomber snow are probably your two best star stars, and you're going to need them deal with five. You're going to need if you take a grass, you're probably going to take Venusaur, which again is weak to an AWAC. Bigger off. You've already said it's probably going to be on your team as your normal time. Week to an AWA. You've got three things that are already week to an AWA. Why would you put Galvantula in and make it four? Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's. For me, it feels like um, two out of the three. I feel as though you, you're going to need an electric to deal with the light polyto and the odd power to manage things like that. The journal. I think I think it's electric or grass. I think it's very difficult to bring both, uh, unless the grass is a bomber snow, perhaps. Um, mm. well, so but, but then again, you're you're even weaker to AWAC or fire, so you can't bring. Yeah. In my opinion, it's it's hard to bring bring Galvantula and a bomber snow because the moment you see a fire type, you're not gonna. Mm. You you'll be scared to run both. Yeah, I think if you're running Galvantula, you've got to build your team so that you're not as weak to AWAC. Mm. Would be a pick them, you know. But as you've said, you've got polytoad, but if you don't get polytoad lined up for AWAC, then you're in trouble then. Yeah. yeah. But, there's, but, there's, but there's plenty of things out there that, that beat AWAC, to be fair. Like, that you know, between fire and ghost, you've got a nice amount of weaknesses. You've got other ghosts that can deal with it. You've got dark types that can deal with it. You've got water types. Um, you know, that's. Uh, there's, there's Reggie Rocks knocking about. Uh, Certainly, if you're in tournaments that I'm in, there's Reggie Rocks knocking about. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, and and to be fair, the Vigoroth matchup versus AWAC can be flipped. Like, 
if the and if the, it's not ideal having Vigor off Inverse versus AWAC, obviously, but if the if the AWAC's on in versus Vig, it's not coming out with with that much health, and it, then no. it's not in versus Gals. So there's, there's that. I I I prefer not having my Vigor no um, not having my AWAC lined up against a normal type because you're just outlasting them. That's what you're doing, mm. and. And it's not ideal because you'll end up losing. Ba you basically lose your AWAC uh, for switch advantage, and then it might be gone, and your win con might be gone as well. It's true. Mm. It's true. Yeah. I've played AWAC a lot uh, in GBL, or and every self meta has been available basically, uh, but um, whenever it's faced up against a normal type you're giving up a lot of closing power just mm. to outlast something. Yeah, for sure. Mm. I'm just a bit bored of AWAC, to be honest. Um, I get that, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, but, it's, been, uh, it's been everywhere for a while. Yeah, I mean, that's not a good reason not to use it, but uh, if, if that sentiment is repeated elsewhere, then then mm. maybe we'll, we'll see a few less, but I don't know. Cool. Any, any... Not Shadow Ball, no. If you run his Shadow Ball on A1. Yeah. I think, I think Shadow Ball is the way to... I think Shadow Ball always has been the way to go with AWAC. It's sometimes... I mean, it's it's baity. AWAC is baity, exactly. I guess. But... Uh, but and, and you have to bait even with the Shadow Ball. Yeah. So why not, why not bring the nuke? Uh, you're giving up so much closing power if you're not bringing Shadow Ball. In my I agree, opinion. mate. I agree completely. I, yeah. I've not even built a shadow bomb one yet. That's just, just. Uh, <laughs> I have one. You have one. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, unless there's anything else we want to say about Galv, um, let's move on to uh, to Marcus's pick. Energy okay. ball. Yeah. <laughs> energy ball on Galv. <laughs> would you run energy ball on Galv instead of instead of death charge? Would you run energy ball? Surely not. Oh. Because you're already doing electric damage with volts, right? Yep. Why not go energy ball? That's uh, it. That's, you've lost all play versus AWAC there. All play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're screwed. Yeah. Uh, I do, I do yeah. like an energy ball gal, but here... here Look, as you said, you're bringing Polly to deal with AWAC. You've probably got something else there that can take on AWAC and not do too bad against you. But you're stuck against West Dash. Dunkless, one uh, you're already winning Whiskash with the Volt Switch and Lunch, actually. Yeah. Cool. Right, let, let's hear about yours then, Marcus. Okay, uh, Pokedex number 809. There we I go. got it in straight, there. Straight in there. Straight in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm bringing Melmetal. Uh, and uh, I think Melmetal is a really interesting pick in this meta. Um, it's got that singular steel typing, which is one of the best typings in the entire game, in my opinion, May, perhaps the best. Uh, it's got so many resistances, and that's what I like about about Melmetal compared to, let's say, Registeel. Uh, because that's the most prominent other uh, singular steel typed uh, tank that's out there. Uh, Melmetal is not very tanky it's it's average like like cherry it's not tanky it can take a neut neutral hit fine but it can't take two and that makes my metal um threatening because you don't want to take uh charge moves from a metal 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 will uh two shot basically anything in this meta even uh, some of the most common um, counters for metal metal in this meta are, as we've discussed, Vigroth and AWAC. You're doing super effective uh, damage to both with the charge moves. And uh, you could say Rock Slide was nerfed, but you are still two-shotting basically everything. So you're not giving up that much with the Rock Slide nerf because you'd need two Rock Slides anyway. And uh, the coverage um, between Superpower and Rock Slide is great because uh, Rock and Fighting type damage has great synergy. Um, 
and it's flexible. So the, uh, for me, it's the entire combination of metal uh, between the coverage, resistances, and uh, that you are you're really pressing shields. And if you're pairing the metal with, let's say, a frostless that thrives with uh, shield advantage, uh, and it's also covering uh, the fight, uh, fighting and ground weakness for the metal, you're setting it up for glory. Uh, the biggest issue of this pair is fire types, which Mel Metal at least do super effective damage to. And uh, Frostlass can one shot an A, like we all know this. So uh, for me, Mel Metal brings a lot of utility and a lot of shield pressure, which can set you up for late game, even though you lose the lead. With the, if you're staying you know, in with the metal, metal, you'll you'll take shields, or let's say you safe switch it and you're faced by a big wrath, you will take shields, you will go up in shield advantage, and you'll even land, you'll at least land one superpower or take both shields, and then your frost house will sweep anything left on the board basically. Yeah, it's it's. That's that's what I like of the steel type in here is that yeah you're weak to counter but you're resisting body slam so as long as you, yeah as long as you can hit vigor off quickly enough uh, it isn't that bad and yeah there's there's a lot to like about no metal um, mm. but yeah I, I really like it and it, it's a it's it's one of those yeah. because it's so fast if you do if you do get if your opponent is a bit slow switching into it that's you know, you, you're, you're more than halfway to a charge move if they're a little bit slow. Um, mm. it, it's, I think it's a great mod. Um, and I've I've led my metal a bit, but I was wondering if if any of you guys were to run my metal, how would you use it? Because uh, for me, I've basically mostly used it as a lead, but I guess it could function both as a safe switch and a, as a closer, in a way. What do you guys think? Any? Anyone? Audio? Anyone want to jump in? Like, I've got some thoughts, but I'm happy to, happy to let someone else go first. I think I think it could be situational, depending on what your opponent's team is made up of. Okay. Uh, what would you not oh, bring momentarily in against? Hmm. I don't think there's much that you wouldn't bring it in again. Yeah. Exactly. No. Uh, you uh, if if uh, you're bringing it against a polytone from the lead, you're winning the zero shield if they don't go for earthquake wow yeah, yeah. I, I think so the key like goal though I, th I think the key thing with with mel metal is not to use it as a counter switch because <laughs> i because, agree which, um regardless of what you're switching it into um you're if you even if you're even if you're just a tad slow that might be enough to, to swing things and make you use a shield and if then or well, then, if you, or even without that, even if you're keeping it in neutral shields and you're going for superpowers, things can go, things can go badly with superpower. Yeah, it goes, it, it goes sideways quickly if you're not landing superpowers. Yeah, I think lead, lead or closer for sure, or safe switch if you've got safe switch if you're trying to. Thing, I guess safe switch is sort of traditionally you think you think of sort of things like Vigoroth and Sableye where you shield twice and get get hmm. switched. I mean, mm. you can't really do that with with Mel Metal because well, you, maybe you can if you aim rock slides, but you, you've got to build a line that's prepared to take a shield advantage and just go superpowers and, and take a shield. But uh, I mean, it sounds like you're a big fan of that sort of play anyway. Uh, so I imagine yeah. as you, you said pairing it with Frostlass is is sort of is the way is a is a strong start there, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and then le leading is nice as well because you can, as you say, you can stay in and, and win zero and force a shield, or you can throw a superpower and dip and you know reset yeah. this. Uh, I've I've had um, I've had my metal against. Uh, I think it, it might have been your Vigoroth, Matt. It was. It was. Uh, yeah. We, well, um, I've certainly faced I've certainly faced your metal. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I stayed in, threw a superpower, and dipped. And then I had uh, Amon in the back with a nuke that uh, took out its hardest counter uh, because because of a nuke and yeah. uh, and because you didn't want to go down two shields, would you? Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah so so i think my metal um even though even though it doesn't have the best win rate of all the mods in this cup i think it can set you up for a lot of um great place late game perhaps and i know also uh, if we dive into the sims i know it loses to govanchula in the one shield which is kind of bait dependent because as a missile, if you don't shield the first charge move, the second rock slide will KO the Galvantula. Unless, so let's let's say uh, the Galvantula baits you with lunge because lun lunge doesn't do enough damage to to take out the metal in any way. That means you. Um, you're taking Shield advantage, you're getting the second rock slide, and Galvantula is coming out with 10 HP and energy dry. Mm. Um, or at least, uh, it's not that threatening if you plan for it, at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if they hit the discharge on the first one, you will get to the second rock slide, and you'll either take them out or you'll win, uh, or you'll win two shields. Mm. So, uh, against Galvantula, it's not that bad of a matchup as it seems like from PB Poke. I at least never shield the first move against Galvantula, and it's been going great, to be honest. Yeah, and and, it, and it, it itself has got a lot of players like that as well, where... Uh, the, going going for the superpower is, is your, or, or landing a superpower is, is, the, is the condition where um, that, that wins you the game, similar to Galvantula, where um, getting a bait is is the condition, and uh, mm. there's, there's, with, with matchups like that, you can it can get you out of some really tough positions. Um, True. You know, it, it's no one wants to. Well, it's, it's like Galvantula Toxie, I think, is an interesting example where um, all, you know all, all the Sims say that Toxie loses that because it's, mm. it's all it's all bait dependent, but. Uh, Again, Galf, Galf has to go for uh, the the lunge first to win that, and knowing that, as, as you say, you can go for the you can go for the you can let it through as the as the toxic player or, or the melmetal in the player in this in this instance. Um, yeah, deb debuffs I guess in in general are uh, are a pain in the ass to play around. What what I don't I I, I don't like superpower as a move though. I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this because. I much prefer close combat mm. and just take the two stage de de uh, defense drop because then at least uh, you know all my eggs are, are in one basket then um yeah yeah um, I'm, I'm fragile but i'm hit, still hitting hard but yeah superpower, I mean, after that you use after one superpower you, you can't take it so you're not hitting hard either like it's you know yeah you've burned up your your gunpowder anyway yeah yeah, yeah and, and it's not like you can sit there and tank anymore it's true. It's a really, really uh, awkward move, isn't it? I, I don't know. Uh, it takes. Uh, I, I, I agree. I, I think superpower would uh, uh, close combat would be an upgrade, mm. but uh, it doesn't have close combat, no. does it? No. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> uh, it's better than, Yeah, yeah. You could run thunderbolt. But I think uh, instead of rock slides, to be honest, I yeah. don't think you, yeah you do, you you don't want to switch up superpower uh, switch out superpower on metal metal. No, um, it's an interesting shot though because rock and electric have sim very, you know, similar coverage. Well, yeah. the flying crossover. What, what do you reckon? Yeah. Would you consider a, a thunderbolt uh, thunderbolt <laughs> metal metal as your electric type? Oh well, yeah, I've got PB poke up at the moment, and I just saw that obviously metal metal has. The Thunderbolt option, and I've got to admit, I'd be tempted. You know, Melmetal is not even on my radar to run, but if I were to run one, Thunderbolt would probably be the way I'd go over Rock Slide. Oh, well, I I completely disagree with you there, mate, because you've given up fire, the fire coverage uh, that you would need, in my opinion. If you if you pair it with Frostlass, uh, for instance, uh, or another Ice type, uh, I think I think you'd. Uh, need uh, Rockside to weaken the fire types, in my opinion. 
See, I, I think I'd, I think I'd agree with Rockslide like Thunderbolt. I just don't like superpower. I, I dislike superpower that much. I just then, don't like it. Then, then you don't run no metal mates. Well, that's why I'm not going <laughs> to run it. That's why I'm not going to run it. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I've used, uh, it, I've used uh, it before, and it's it's, uh, it's worked nicely. But I think running Rockslide like Thunderbolt, you just run it a few moves at big flies. Yeah. Then if if you run power it if, isn't great, but it can it's still good. do a job when you yeah. need to. Uh, if you're running if you're running Thunderbolt Rock Slide, you you're basically running Promo Pass. Yes. And I like, yeah. like Promo Pass. Yeah. <laughs> this is without the double weakness. <laughs> full circle, mates. Yeah. This is full circle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just without the double weakness. Cool. Yeah. Well, now, yeah, I think yeah, I think uh, Superpower Rock Slide is the way to go, and I think my muscle is a great uh, pick in my opinion, at least. But you you would need to build your team to take care of its yeah. weaknesses, basically, as yeah. with any other. Yeah, similar to Galp in it. It's well, I guess it, it it's much more of a starting point. I guess like it's it's never going to pop up on the team builder as like oh from from this. It's um... I'm 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 not too sure because a steel type will, will always do well on PV poke and uh, with the way simulations go with uh, the superpower baits or rock slide baits and then double superpower I think uh, Melmetal is easier to sim it, it rarely plays as it sims mm. and so I think uh, you would need to practice a lot with Melmetal to make it work properly in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. Yeah, I think my metal's brilliant and mass I use it to mass I just mm. think it's disquieting greatly. I think the fact that Vigoroth can survive a super power, even if you rock slide base. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's basically 50% or 60%. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you're, you're two-shotting big. As my uh, metal, you're basically two-shotting everything that's not obstacle. Mm. That's if you, if you land in both moves, though, but as you... But the bigger off going to shield that first superpower if you throw. You're not going to two yeah. shot it at that point. You're going to lose that match. I think it's yeah. too much of a risk. Uh, and I uh, I understand that, uh, but you take in shield advantage. And if you play around with it, if if you build your team to uh, to gain shield advantage and then look to sweep in late game with with a shield advantage, uh, I think it's is metal is a way to get there. To put yeah. it that way, yeah. This could this could have been a feature on Frostlass to put it this way because <laughs> uh, because uh, Frostlass is a mom that can sweep late game uh, with the shield advantage. So can a lot of other mods like Ridge Rock or or Ridge Steel or something else that packs Shadows a punch. Up. Shadows that does, mate. Shadow Satos. Shadow Satos is a is a great example. Yeah. Or Galvantula maybe. Um, but Melmetal can give you that advantage if you're looking for it. Yeah. Is my is my is my selling point to put it that way. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested in this meta. I'm really interested. Um, yeah. Everything's viable, and everyone has such different thoughts on it. It's it's mad. It's mad. But uh, I'm yeah. coming round to it slowly. Yeah, I think it's it's it's. I really enjoyed it to begin with, and then it's it's annoying me now because I can't ever quite get the six I want. But yeah, anyway, I feel you. Got, got to go now in case I lose this recording. So thanks very much, okay. guys. Much appreciated. Thanks for having me. Sure. Okay, guys.